to see if this is making sense, take a look at each of these five examples here of antiderivatives or indefinite integrals, ones without limits, and just ask, is there a nice combination, like we saw in the previous example, of something and its derivative that's easily available? We'll pause here for a second and then take a look at each one. Okay, so if we look at each term one by one, if we imagine what would we get if we integrated x squared times e to the x cubed, our first guess, I hope, would be e to the x cubed. And again, what would we do to make sure that's true or not is we check by finding the derivative of e to the x cubed, and we'd get e to the x cubed times the derivative of the exponent, which is 3 times x squared. And that's pretty close to what we need. We just slide in a 1 third to make that work out exactly. We don't have a 3 in the original. We have a 3 in what we have, so we'll slide in a third here. And of course, we shouldn't have forgotten, the plus c overall. So number 1 here is very susceptible to a guess and check, knowing or recognizing that the derivative of the inside function here, x cubed, is a constant times x squared, or close to x squared. That's not going to be the case here. e to the x squared times x squared is not going to work out as nicely. You can try. Uh, this one here will work out nicely. If we get e to the x squared as our answer plus a constant, we can check. And if we take the derivative of e to the x squared plus a constant, we get e to the x squared times 2x. Hey, that's almost what we were starting with. We, of course, just need to get rid of that 2. So we put a half everywhere. And that becomes our antiderivative. So 1 this looks good. 3 looks good. 4 is going to have some serious problems again because, like the cos of x squared example by itself, we're going to get chain rule stuff happening when we guess at an answer, and it's not going to be easy to clean up. And last but not least, this one here doesn't seem to have the same pattern either. The x or the complicated function has to be on the inside with its derivative being on the main line or outside the function we're uh, looking at. So here the exponential. Here we have an x squared, but the derivative of x squared does not go into an exponential when we use the chain rule. So again, you can try to guess and check, but this will not be something that's actually easy to do with by intuition alone anyway. Which leaves us with 1 and 3 being the more obvious cases where we could guess an antiderivative and it's going to be fairly simple because what was inside one part of the function is also its derivative is hiding outside and will work nicely with the chain rule. In that same vein we can make things a little more exotic. e to the sine of x times cos of x looks crazy hard but we recognize the pattern. The derivative of sine is cos so what we can guess here is that our integral is simply e to the sine of x plus a constant. And then we can check. We're going to take the derivative of e to the sine of x plus a constant. And that's going to give us e to the sine x again times the derivative of the exponent, which is cos of x. And we're done plus c is 0, and that's a perfect match to what we started with. So if we get the derivative of what we guessed being exactly what we started with, then what we started with antiderivative is exactly our guess, so this is good. Next week we're going to formalize this a little bit further. Uh, we can do fairly simple integrals like this where we have something inside and its derivative outside just by inspection but we're going to modernize this or make it a little more thorough or rigorous by using a method called substitution starting next week.